Hello there, I'm Eric Renault and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. Now here's a photograph that I took a little while ago that to be honest with you, I'm a little bit disappointed with. I knew there was a good photograph in there somewhere, but I'm not sure that I captured it. So I'm gonna lean on Photoshop quite a bit to give it a bit of pizzazz and a bit of oomph. Okay, I'm gonna press Control and O and that's gonna open this image and it's gonna first open up in Adobe Camera Raw. This is a Camera Raw 7 because I'm using the new Photoshop. And you can see that I can then start to fiddle about with these sliders. The first thing we notice is the sliders are in the middle, which is very helpful, especially when we want to add some blacks in there, which we do. And let's back the clarity right up in this particular image. That's nice. I'm going to bring the exposure just up a little bit and the contrast maybe a little bit as well. And let's pull those shadows down maybe. Okay, and the highlights down a little bit. Okay, let's have a look at that. That's the uh, before and after. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there, but let's open the image up. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna go into Photoshop CS6. And uh, what the beauty of this is, we've got a brand new filter, the blur filter. So that's what we're gonna use for this image. But first of all, before we do anything else, let's control J to duplicate, jump, duplicate, however you want to remember it, that layer. Okay, let's go up to filter and then down to blur and I'm going to choose Field Blur. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these three I actually choose because they're all going to open up anyway. You can see on the right-hand side, we can access the Field Blur, the Iris Blur, and the Tilt Shift. Now, I'm just going to turn this off for a second because when you first open this, it may look like that. Um, I'm going to double-click on Blur Effects just to bring that bottom panel up because we are going to be accessing that in just a second. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to whack the blur up quite significantly, maybe not that significantly, but quite a lot. Let's go around about 60, 70. There we go, that's fine. Now I can change the center of the blur if I wanted to. In this case, it's not necessary. And then I'm gonna come down and I'm going to look at this bokeh effects here. Now I can add light bokeh, so you can see it's gonna get quite bright there, in fact. Um, more brighter than I, I particularly want, but let's add some color bokeh in there as well. Let's whack that up let's go around about 30 ish maybe okay hmm not coming out a great deal it's not very good and that's because of these two sliders here are right at the very light end and that's not what i want at all i actually want to bring these right the way down it's going to get worse before it gets better let's go around about there it's fine and then i want to bring this one down almost so it's touching really and you can see now we're starting to get that nice colored speckly bokeh effect going on there very nice and it's almost like it's a, a random non-random pattern it's being produced by what's in the photograph of course but it's got this nice feel of randomness to it which is going to help us a lot when we come back into the main image okay for now i'm quite happy with that i'm going to click ok to start that on its merry way and it's going to take quite a while and the reason for that is one uh, my computer isn't that fast. It's really not up to date enough. I really should work on that. Um, two, of course, I'm trying to record this as well as we're going along. So the poor old computer's working double hard for it. Bless it. Okay, so um, maybe I'll let that run in the background and maybe speed it up and we'll come back in just a minute. Okay, so here we go, it's about done. I'm not sure exactly how long, I didn't take much notice of how long that took. Uh, I should put it up on the screen. Okay, so here we have our nice color bokeh effect. And it's completely ruined our picture, you think, but don't panic, here we go. One very simple little change, I'm gonna come over to the blend mode, and I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And it pops it straight out, if I turn this off, um, before and after before and after. We've kind of popped it out very nicely indeed. Now I can experiment with other blend modes. Let's try the color burn. You can see it's really burned that through, hasn't it? So let's take that down to around about 40-ish percent maybe. There we go. And so let's go a before and an after. You can see it's really kind of popped it out. I'm gonna take that back to multiply and take it back up to 100% before and after. We're kind of making quite a lot of difference here. Let me show you something else. If I have this 
layer targeted and I go over to my channels. Now your palette may not look quite the same as this. I've got my history one on there, that's just where I like it. But anyway, uh, your channels should be here if you've kept it all to its default. If not, window and then channels. Okay, and in my channels I can choose the red, the green or the blue. Now I've actually targeted the wrong layer. <laughs> Let me try that again. Okay, I just want the bokeh effect, that's all. Okay, channels, okay, red, the green and the blue. And I can select these as well. So if I hover over the top, I press control, you can see I've got that, that box, that dotted box on my cursor. And if I click on there now, I've actually selected the, the pixels there that are in the red channel. Now I'm gonna go back to my RGB, go back to layers and turn that background back on. Now if I go down to my, um, and let's change uh, hue saturation, for example. Okay, now you can see straight away it's added a layer mask, which was the selection that we made from the red channel. So now if I start messing around with my saturation, it's targeting actually only the layers where the, uh, where the layer mask allows it to. Let's have a look at the layer mask. Um, I've just pressed Alt and clicked on the layer. So you can see that it's uh, varying degrees of blacks and whites there, which is very cool um, because now I can use that as a layer mask. I can change the opacity of that layer if I should I wish. Um, let's bring it up a little bit, really saturate that and before and after. So in this particular instance, what we've done is we've changed the color of the ivy. We've beefed up the ivy there, which is where the, uh, the layer mask allowed us to do that. Um, and But not the area up here too much in the, uh, in the headstone there. So before and after. So we've really beefed that up. Let's have a look at our before and after from the very beginning. So if I press Alt and then click on the, uh, the eyeball next to the background layer, we'll go just to single that one out. So that's our before and that's our after. Before and after. And we've done both of those using the bokeh effect in the new CS6. There we go. My name's Eric Reno. You can find more of me at tipscroll.com along with some other brilliant writers, which I'm internally grateful to their wonderful generosity. Okay, that's it from me. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.